Welcome to CSC 103 class. We're going to be working with Vectory, which is going to be going over 3D technology, 3D graphics. It's an online 3D software application. And these are the instructions right here, Vectory Instruct. We're going to be making boxes and then a snowman. Very simple stuff just to get familiar with 3D space. These are the instructions. There are screenshots here. There's examples of finished product of the snowman. There's also a link here. If you click on this link, Here's the finished product of one I did. Now there's no color on these, but as our first practice, we're just gonna make some boxes, rotate them, stack them, and use basically primitive shapes just to get familiar with working in Vectory and working in a 3D program if you haven't done that before. I don't think you'll find this that hard. Students in class didn't find this that difficult. If you're new with 3D, it's a little bit of getting used to the third dimension. And also I talk about 3D in our PowerPoint, so I'm not gonna go over a whole lot about 3D here. So we're just going to get started with Vectory. You could sign up right here, and it's free, and you get three free projects. If you, if you have three projects in there, you'll have to use another account, or they'll start encouraging you to sign up for the premium account, but you don't need to do that. You could just delete one of your projects, and I'll show you how to do that. But you could create an account here with your email and password. I already have one, so I'm going to close out of here because I already have, I think, three accounts. But you could sign up here. Keep it very simple so that you know what your password, just use the same password for all these kind of free software applications. But I'll close this up. But again, it's Vectory.com. And it's the vectors are what's basically underneath the 3D technology, the, the wireframes that we're going to be working on. So it's not necessarily Vector. It is 3D, but it is called Vectory.com. And I'm going to log in. And when you come into Vectory, you'll see that you'll have some options here that'll say create a new project. If I try to create a new project right now, it's going to say become a premium member. And if I close it, it's going to keep doing that. That's because I already have three projects. And what I'm going to do here is delete one of mine. Here's one that I had started. And to delete it, you have to go into open it up first. And there it is. And you can see this one started and I never finished it. I was doing that in class. And then if you go where it says project name, I didn't even give it a name yet, you can delete it. So I'm going to delete this project. So I'll have a new project. And then I'll have a new area down here to create a new project. See, I can only have three under the free account. So I'm going to create a new project. And the first thing we're going to do on the instructions, here's the instructions, before we get to the snowman, is we do a little practice here with numbers four and five, where we just create a box, which is a primitive, they call it a box, it's a cube, and we're just going to practice moving it around in 3D space. So I'm going to go back to here, and you can see nothing's here. Now remember, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, like a piece of paper, and the z-axis is the one going up, that's coming out of the paper, coming out of our grid. Now this grid here is, when you print it out, when you print renders of it, it's going to be invisible, but it gives you kind of a place to kind of position things and know where you're at. It gives you kind of a reference area, but it's it's kind of invisible. So I'm going to create a shape. I'm going to go over to, now hover over this. Don't click on here because it'll create a shape right away. So just hover over it and then a menu will kind of open up and then I'm going to just go hover over box and then I'll click and there's my box and you'll see all these arrows here. And the way they work, if you grab on arrows and I'm only going to grab on the arrows that go along the axes. This is going along the x-axis, and how do I know that? Well, it's, it's kind of pink colored, but also it's showing me x, y, and z. They always go in this order, x, y, and z, for position, rotation, even size, x, y, and z. So when I move this, I can see I'm moving it on the x-axis. It's negative that way, it's positive that way. And if I bring it back towards the middle, I could go this way, and you could see it's positive in the y-axis, and if I drag it back by grabbing on the arrow, it's negative on the y-axis, and I'll drag it back to the middle again, and, and I'll drag it up, and that's going up on the z-axis. You can see that one's up to 74 over here. So that's the z-axis. That's moving it, and you use these arrows on the end. They also have this arrow that you kind of move around kind of randomly, but until you get used to it, I'd say almost stick to, stick to the arrows that go along the axes. Also, another thing that you can do, or be aware of when you work in Vectory, if you hit your tab key, you kind of move around, you're seeing down here, you're seeing left view, top view, bottom view, 
perspective view, which is actually seeing it so you see some depth to it, that's going to be helpful once we stack things on top of each other and we need to see how they're positioned. Because it's hard to see where things are positioned in all directions when you're, when you're viewing it on this because you may not you may be off a little bit. So we're going to use the different views. We're going to have to change the views to see things a little bit. But those are called orthographic views. When we hit the tab key and you see front, you can see we see no depth when we look at them. Also, you could zoom in. Now, I'm using a trackpad right now, but you can zoom in using your scroll wheel, zoom in and out. And when you hold down on your space bar, you can actually move around holding your left mouse button and move around and kind of pan a little bit with that hand icon. So you could zoom in and out. You could hold your space bar. We'll zoom in and out with your scroll wheel or on your trackpad. Hold your left mouse button and hold the space bar. Now if you hold your left mouse button down, you could kind of move around like this. You could move around in space and kind of view it. You could even go all the way around it if you need to. But the, you kind of work in kind of a free kind of perspective mode when you hold down on your left mouse button. So that's what it looks like there. So you could zoom, you could pan holding your space bar if you needed to get it back into your viewing area. And then if you just hold down on your left mouse button, you could kind of move around in space like that. And I think it kind of started off, yeah, I think it was like that, somewhat like that to start. Okay, you also, also to be aware, you have these things here, you have these rotating things, these like hula hoop things. So you could rotate around your z-axis you could rotate around your and if you don't know what axis it is you could see up here that may be rotating around it's kind of hard now that we turned it but you can rotate around your x-axis you could rotate around your y-axis i think that's rotating around the the y-axis you could see it's rotating around that kind of green rotating around the y-axis and you could rotate around the the X. Now I shouldn't have turned it, but anyway, you can do all that and you could also change these things over here. And if you have it all messed up like I just did, if you go in here and you put zero, tab, zero, tab, zero, you can put it back the way it was. And for position, if I put in zero, tab, zero, tab, zero, and enter, now it's back exactly the way it was. You can also scale it in here. And also keep in mind that these things, these arrows here, this is a stretch scale, so if you need to make something longer, use the first box coming in. And you can see that's doing, it's stretching it on the Z axis under size. And if I bring this down again, or if I put this back to one, if I use the box in the middle, I could kind of scale it in all directions. I'm just dragging with my mouse or my trackpad. The diagonal and is scaling in all directions. You see it's locked, it has these lock things on there. So it's keeping that locked in all directions for scaling. So you could scale in one direction with these, scale in all directions with this, and this is your moving, moving around. Now you can grab this and move it around. If you can, there's places where you could grab and move around, but I find that a little difficult if you're starting out. So I'd recommend trying to stick with these arrows when you move it around in the beginning. All right, now what I'm gonna do first is delete this. Notice that we have a box here showing, showing kind of like a, a layer palette and as we make more, there'll be new ones on top of that. I'm gonna hit delete with my backspace key right now, and I'm gonna create a new one, and we're gonna do a little box exercise. So I'll hover, hover over box. There's my box. Now, I'll zoom in a little bit so I see my box. And I don't have to do anything with my box. You can give it a color. You can go down here if I wanna make it red. I'll give it a color. And then I'm gonna duplicate this box, and let me look at my instructions here. Because this is the practice, this is all the practice stuff of the box. And now we're going to start this stuff to make our box kind of exercise. We're making a new box. And we're going to duplicate it. We're going to use Control D or Menu Edit Duplicate. And I'll show you where this is. While this one selected, Box is selected, we could go to the Menu, Edit, Duplicate, or Control D. So you could use Control D on your keyboard once, you, once you're aware of that. Now, keep in mind, I just duplicated it. And you, you might be like, well, where is it? It's actually exactly the same as the original, which is kind of confusing. So you have to click on box one. That's the new one. And I'm going to drag it up. And you can see that's the copy that we made. And I'm going to make it a different color right away, just so I know that that's a different one. And I'll even call it, I could even call it box two or box middle, because we have a box bottom. And you could double click on these names. 
and I'll say box bottom. And this one, when I click on this one, and when I want to scale it, I could go over here to size, and I'm going to put in 60. And then I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees, and I could just do that numerically. So I could go over, and I'm going to rotate it on the Z axis. So I'll use the last, last field here, and I'll put in 45. And there it is. I'll move it down a little bit so I can see it. I'll pan down so I can create my next one. Now I'm going to create another box on top of this. Now it'll be straight again like this one. So I can still duplicate this one. Or you could make a new one, but I'm going to duplicate it. And this time I'll just do Control D. And it's Control D whether you're on Mac or Windows. And now I have box middle one. And I'll move it up. So this is the new one. Whenever it puts a number there, that means it's the new one. And I'll call it box top right away. And I'll change the color right away. Maybe I'll give it a blue. And this one I'm going to size to 40. Here I'm going to rotate it back to 0. So it's like the original. And then I'm going to make a cylinder. And then I'm going to put a cone on top of that. And again, this is just practice. It's just getting used to our space. I'll hover over here, put a cylinder, drag it up so I could see it using the arrow. There's my cylinder. I'll make this a different color. Maybe I'll make it a purple, purple cylinder. And I'll make it 20, so I'll scroll up. And in terms of size, now, if you see the size here, it's saying 195, 100. I mean, that's pretty close to being even all around. That's, again, the X and Y. It's not, I guess it's not a perfect circle for a cylinder since it's saying 95 there. But the Z is 100. And what you can do here is, since there's a lock thing there, if you just put in 20, It'll kind of scale everything, even though that one goes down to 19. If you need to make them different, like for for example, if you need to make the cylinder taller, you would have to unlock this. And just for example, I'll make the cylinder taller, and I'll make it, well, actually, that wouldn't be taller. It would do that. It would make it kind of longer. I, won't, I don't want that. Let me put it back to 20. But if you unlock this, and I put this to 40, for example, would make a taller cylinder. So now my cylinder is taller on the z-axis. And if I want to make sure it's right on top, it's hard to see where it's at. That's where you can use your tab key and maybe zoom in a little bit. Actually, all my shapes are a little off here. So using a orthographic view, whether it's back or front, I'm going to grab this one, move it down. I'm going to click on this one, use the arrow, and move it down. And I'll pan down holding my space bar click on this one and pan down a little more so I can see the arrow and drag the arrow down. Now that's centered and if you tab all around you could see that it's centered from all sides including the bottom which doesn't really help you. So the last thing we're going to do here is just put a cone on top and again it's just practice. I know it's not that exciting so I'm going to hover over here and because it's a new shape, a new primitive shape and I'm going to hover over cone, and there's my cone, which is buried underneath the cube. I'll bring it up here so I can see it. I'll do the same thing, I'll, and I'm not going to change the name because it's the only cone I have on here. Um, this is locked, so I'm just going to put 20 in here, and it should be the same size as the cylinder, or at least with same X and Y as the cylinder. I'll make it orange because I didn't use an orange color yet. And there it is. There's my orange cone. I'll zoom in a little bit so I can see it. And just to make sure where it's stacked, I'll hit my tab key. And I could see my cone could probably be, or my cylinder could probably be moved down just a little. And then my cone would be moved down just, just a little bit. And if you move down too far, it's going to go inside the shape, which, which is okay. And now if I just use my mouse button to move, move around, I see it in perspective again. And that's all I need right now. That's fine for what I'm doing. And I'm going to go up here. And if you double click on here, you could give it a name. Or if you just hit save, I'm just going to hit save. And it doesn't give you an option to change the name right away. It just saves it as project name. So if you go to rename, you could just call it eight boxes. 
I'll put a dash V because it's the video that I'm recording here. And that's my eight boxes. And then I'm done with this. That's all you have to do with this. And if you want to, you can go over to render and kind of take a picture of it. And it kind of renders it a little bit. We don't have any background or textures or anything going on yet. And then to share it, what you're going to do is you're going to go to viewer. Now you do have to do this. You have to hit generate. And then you're going to use this embed code. But the first thing you have to do under viewer is hit generate. And you got to wait like maybe 10 seconds to 15 seconds at the most. It'll seem like it'll take a while, but it'll actually be pretty quick. Once it's done, it'll say done, get the embed code below. And I'll scroll down. Now down here, this is the embed code. And it'd probably be easiest to change HTML iframe. Change that to just a link. And then you'll have a copy link button. This little thing down here, it says copy to clipboard. If you just copy that, that's all you have to do. And then you can go back to your My Warren. And you could go back to your coursework and you'll look for eight boxes snowman and we'll put more than one in here so you will you'll put more than one link and if you go in here you can see I have one already and I'll just add another one just so it's different and I'll insert link I'll paste it here and you can even change this you could highlight the text to display if I want to put boxes I'll put boxes too because I did it on the video and I still want to choose new window so it opens in a new window and I'll hit OK and save. Now there it is. There's my boxes too. Now when I look at your assignment, I'll click on it and I'll see your boxes. And not only can I just look at it like an image, but I can move around and see how you position things and see if you've got everything stacked perfectly and everything. And that looks pretty good. So that's kind of neat that we can do that. But again, you only get three under the free version for Vectory. But if you're new to 3D, it's a nice place to check out. I'd also recommend downloading Blender if you're interested in 3D. We've used Blender in the course before, and I have some videos on Blender as well. But I'm going to close this up, and the next part of this is actually making a snowman, which is almost the same thing, except we're using spheres, so it won't be that hard. So we're going to make a snowman like this, and we could even put a little background color just out of spheres, uh, spheres for the eyes and then a nose. And we could even put sticks for the arms. I don't have sticks on this sample here. Depends how much time you have to work on it. But that's what we're going to do for Snowman. So I'll do that in a second video now that we've gotten somewhat familiar with using Vectory.